Welcome to our ninth mathematics tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll take a look at programming some numerical differentiation formulas, namely the forward finite difference, the backward finite difference, and the centered finite difference. Our goal for this tutorial will be to take the derivative of the runge function with a step size of 0.1. We can use the table function to create our data points, so we'll set that to g and create a table with the x value and the value of our runge function which is 1 over 1 plus 25x squared. And we want x from negative 1 to 1 with a step size of 0.1. And let's display that in matrix form so we can take a look at our data points. And let's plot the derivative as well. So d of 1 over 1 plus 25x squared. Don't forget to put a round bracket around the denominator with respect to x. And because we're using the derivative function, we need to evaluate x at another variable, let's say i. And now let's take i from negative 1 to 1 and shift enter. And here are our data points. And here is our desired derivative. The first method we'll take a look at is the forward finite difference. So just as a review of what you looked at in the lecture, the numerical differentiation formulas rely on Taylor series expansions which are isolated for the desired derivative, which in this case is f prime. If we look at the error term as well, we see that it is directly proportional to the step size h. Now, because the forward finite difference has an f of xi plus 1 and an xi plus 1 term, that means that a derivative can only be found up to the second last data point, but not the last one, because we can only find the derivative where there is a successive data point. It's hard to picture this just for me explaining it, but we'll plot the FFD to visualize this concept a little better. Programming the function is very straightforward. We essentially just need to use the formula up here. So we'll name this function FFD, and we need to input our set of data points. We'll need to get the length of our data points so that we can make another vector after. And we'll be storing our values in a vector, so we'll use the table function in order to define the vector beforehand. So set xp to a table of zeros just as a placeholder. Now the length of our vector will be n minus 1, since as we mentioned earlier, the derivative can only be found up to the second last data point. So i will go from 1 to n minus 1. Then we'll use a do loop to take the derivatives and store it inside of xp. The derivative can be obtained from the formula in the online notes. So do xp of i equal to, and we'll make this a vector with our value of x, which is x of i comma 1, because if I scroll up to our data points here, all of our x values are in the first column, And all of our f of x's will come from column 2. So x of i plus 1 comma 2 minus x of i comma 2 divided by x of i plus 1 comma 1 minus x of i comma 1. I will go from 1 and once again, we go up to the second last data point, n minus 1. Then we'll output xp. Now let's test this with the wrench function. And we'll plot it as well, so we can see our result against the true derivative. Plot, same as before, d of 1 over 
1 plus 25 x squared. With respect to x, where x is evaluated at i, and i goes from negative 1 to 1. And then we'll use the epilogue function, grabbing the points from the FFD of g. Now shift enter. Here are our derivatives. And here is a graph of our data points against the true derivative. As we can see, the forward finite difference approximation is slightly shifted backward compared to the actual derivative since the derivative at each point is dependent on the next data point. This blue line represents our actual derivative and these black data points represent our approximations. And as we can see here, we're able to take our derivative all the way up to the second last data point, but not the last one. We can do higher order derivatives using the following formulas. The method would be exactly the same, and we would need to substitute the first derivative FFD formula in the function that we made with any of these equations depending on the derivative we want to take. Notice that higher order derivatives require more data points as well. So if we wanted to take, say, the second derivative, we can see that it has an f of xi plus 2 and an f of xi plus 1 term, meaning that we can only take the derivative at a point where we have two succeeding data points. So that means we can only take the derivative up to the third last data point. For now, we'll take a look at the backward finite difference method. Now the main difference between the forward finite difference and the backward finite difference is that the backward finite difference has an f of xi minus 1 term. So that means we can only take the derivative where we have a previous data point. So we have to start from the second data point and go all the way up to the last data point. We can tell from the formula that the accuracy will be roughly the same as the FFD because the error term is also directly proportional to the step size. To save some time, we'll just copy and paste the formula from before and make a few changes. So let's call this one the BFD. We still need the length of x, and the length of our table is still the same. But this time, we'll need to modify the formula in order to match the formula for the backward finite difference. The backward finite difference requires us to start from i equals 2 and then go all the way up to n. So that means xp will need to have an index of i minus 1. So now to change this formula in order to match the formula above, this will be x of i minus 1 minus f of x i divided by x of i minus 1 minus x of i. Now we'll get the BFD of G in matrix form and take our points from the BFD of G. Shift enter. Here are our data points. And we can see that this time the black data points are shifted slightly to the right of the true derivative which is shown in blue since the derivatives depended on the previous data points. And we also see that we're not able to find the derivative of the first data point, but rather we start at the second data point. And the accuracy is roughly the same as the forward finite difference. Now let's take a look at the centered finite difference. Let's copy and paste once again so that we can make the necessary changes. We know that the centered finite difference will be more accurate for step sizes less than 1 when compared to both the FFD and BFD because now the error term is directly proportional to the square of the step size. And the centered finite difference is basically the average of the forward finite difference and backward finite difference. So we'll change this to CFD. Now since CFD requires a previous and successive data point, the derivative can't be calculated at either the first or last data point. So because of that, the size of our vector will be n minus 2. Now i will go from 2 to n minus 1. 
and that means we have to set xp to have an index of i minus 1 as well. And then just modifying this formula, i plus 1 comma 2 minus f of xi minus 1 divided by 2 of the step size. And now change this to CFD and this to CFD. Shift enter. We see our data points. And as we expected, the centered finite difference gives us the best approximation of the derivative since our black data points are almost directly over the blue line which represents our true derivative. And we aren't able to calculate a derivative for our first data point or our last data point. Now as we mentioned earlier, we have higher order derivatives for the basic formulas and high accuracy formulas for all three methods as well. Programming those would simply require the same thing we did to program the CFD and BFD in this tutorial. We would need to determine the size that the vector xp needs to be and fix our indexes and the increments of the do loop depending on the formula. Once again, it's important to note that the higher accuracy formulas as well as the higher order derivatives require more data points. Accuracy can be improved by using high accuracy formulas or just simply decreasing the step size h. In the next part of this tutorial, we'll move on to programming the higher accuracy numeric differentiation formulas.